match number 42. Every game of consequence now, at least for a number of teams in the IPL 2017. We are looking ahead to the Delhi Daredevils uh, hosting the Gujarat Lions. It's a lot of games at home that Delhi will be hosting back to back. Now, in fact, four out of the remaining five fixtures will be at the Kotla. Buoyed by the fact that they've beaten Hyderabad and they now welcome Gujarat fighting for survival. I'm going to preview that game with Sanjay Bangar and Sean Tate joins us. It's taken you long enough, Terry. 42 games. It's about there time, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks <laughs> for having me. Fine. It is indeed. We'll get your thoughts in a minute. Let's enter match day match point number one. And our conversation is on a fast bowler. Shanti will be delighted to talk about one in a bit. Gujarat's most valuable player. And uh, when the auction was concluded, you wouldn't say it would have been Basil Thumpy with all the firepower in the batting. But there's a reason we're talking about Basil Thumpy. Let's look at the numbers. Most balls bowled at the death. Uh, that's over 16 to 20, gents. Jaspreet Bumrah has done the job for a while. So has Bhuvneshwar Kumar. Mitch McClanagan has the international experience, as does Chris Morris. And just out of nowhere, Basil Thumpy features fourth on that list. Economy of nine and a half, got five wickets. Sanjay Bangar, I'll start with you. The use of Basil Thumpy and why he's done a job that isn't usually entrusted, that we don't entrust young Indian uncapped bowlers with. 45 seconds for you. Well, he's thrown into the deep end uh, <laughs> because <laughs> they do not have any options as far as fast serve bowlers are concerned because uh, Andrew Tai has been indisposed because of an injury. He's, he's taken that workload pretty well. Uh, in the earlier half, he started to, whenever he was under pressure, he was bowling his slower balls. But as uh, the tournament progressed, he ensured that he was going back to his uh, Yorkers straight up. Uh, what we also noticed, he attended one of the camps with the Indian team and he was very impressive. He was hitting the deck hard. He did a lot of work in the first class season. So, he's somebody who's sharp and to bowl the Yorker when the ball is wet because the dew factor comes in pretty, pretty much and whenever the team is uh, defending targets, he's done that as well. So, credit to him because he's uh, executed the difficult skill really, really well. Perfect. You have set the standard. Good example for Sean Tate. That's how you do it for 45 seconds, Teddy. Uh, question I'll ask you is, we've all been so excited with Basil Thumpy. He still <coughs> goes at nine and a half. Now, he's inexperienced, he's uncapped. But what about Thumpy's bowling at the death? Do you think, either suggest that he has the ingredients or not to do a very difficult job in T20 cricket? 45 seconds to you. Yeah, I mean, this is a great subject, I think, speaking about young Indian fast bowlers and, and your point about his Yorkers. He's gone back to basics, bowling Yorkers, and he, he said hitting the track hard. So if you're going to bowl the death successfully, you can't just float the ball up there. You've got to hit it hard. You've got to bowl, get, be confident with your Yorkers, get them in there. Um, he's got guys around him as well in, in his side. McCullum, Finch, Rayner, really experienced batsmen that I'm sure he's talking to, you know, post-game, um, pre before the game yeah. and I'm um, just talking to him about how to bowl well at the death to good batsmen so I think that's definitely helping him out um, and I think if you look at the guys that are bowled well in the death um, they're all the informed bowlers in the comp they're probably in your top seven or eight bowlers in the competition because they're so valuable bowling at the death so a great pick for the Lions yeah good job first up in time I must follow <laughs> up and ask you though how, how long did it take for you to actually start bowling at the death when you played the highest level of T20 cricket. Yeah, I mean, I think I was better when I was younger, mm. bowling the death, which might work in his favour here because I don't think when you're younger you actually feel the pressure as much. It sounds stupid, but it, it works that way. You, you don't feel the pressure as much when you're young. So he's a young guy and mm. he's showing that. Right, from uh, the very fast Basil Thumpy to the not so fast Dwayne Smith, it takes us to match day match point number two. Dwayne Smith's extended poor form. Now, it's not the ball that he has his uh, primary responsibility with for Gujarat, it's with the bat. And he's done it so successfully for Chennai and Mumbai and even Gujarat last season in the IPL. But it's not quite working in this new setup uh, for Dwayne Smith, who's been forced to bat at different positions and now more recently in the middle order at number 456 after Ishan Kishan's promotion. Not 4 5 1 and 0 in his last five innings, gentlemen. That's 10 runs in five innings for Dwayne Smith. It doesn't look very good. Uh, let's go to Sean Tate first. You've bowled to Dwayne Smith and you know how he is as a batsman. Uh, is he that kind which ch everything changes if he comes in lower on the order? What have you made? Can you attribute the reason for Dwayne Smith's uh, serious dip in form? Yeah, well, he was in a lot better form when I played against him, but um, <laughs> that's for sure. But he was opening the batting, so I think, you know, going down the order now, um, it, it, it might have thrown him a little bit maybe. You know, he's used to opening the batting for a long period of time in his T20 career. Um, but I think the problem is that they don't have too many other options right now. Yeah. Their injuries have cost him, you know, tyres injured, so maybe if they can get it over out of Dwayne. Um, he's still okay in the field, he's not as quick as he used to be, but just to have an all-rounder, I suppose, in your side can be maybe handy. Uh, although he hasn't performed that well. Um, the other thing is he's only playing T20 cricket. So when you get mm. older, 34 years old Dwayne is, so when you get older it's quite difficult to keep up your form if you're only playing T20. 
Um, I experienced that a little bit as a bowler, just, just playing one format. Um, you tend to, if, you, if you're out of form, it's, it can be hard to get yourself back in form with not enough cricket being played. Okay, I actually don't mind you going on a bit about that. What's, what's the challenge, well, playing just the one form? You know, you're, you, you rely on yourself to, to train. Um, you, do, you, don't, you don't always have the, you know, the same team environment. You're not with the Indian team or the Australian team or, or the I'm West Coast sure team. I'm doing a good job about that, about yeah, yeah, training all of the Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. to find places to train properly and, and be consistent in a team, it, it can be challenging. Okay. Sanjay yeah. Bangar, we spoke of this affair prior and we said the, one of the mistakes that they could have made was changing a successful batting order with McCollum and Smith. Are we now reinforcing that point or can they still fix it by putting those two at the top? given how Ishan Kishan seems to have gone. What's the answer to Dwayne Smith? We'll first just look at his last uh, year of T20s uh, before I get uh, Sanjay's comments. And Teddy mentions he plays only this format. Last one year, since May 2016, uh, 18 single-digit scores, strike rate of 120, uh, seven ducks. So he, he's one of those either hit or miss uh, sort of opening batsmen. He's been more prolific and consistent in the IPL in the past. But just your thoughts on how Gujarat can now fix this with the limited options they have. Well, out of those 46 innings, he's opened in the thir in 36 innings and what has happened is that even in the 36 innings that he's played, uh, his strike rate and his average is pretty much similar to what uh, what he's actually showing as, uh, as uh, returns for the year. So, it's not that he's only batting well at the top of the order and not really batting well at the, uh, down the order. So, what the point that Sean was making was pretty valid because when you're playing different formats as well and you're playing regularly, uh, and one of the things actually helps as a batter is to play the ball late. You know, uh, it's not only play one way, rotate the strike and then go for the big shots. So, that is something which is hampering him quite a bit. The Gujarat Lions, yes, they have uh, uh, compounded their troubles by having too many batters at the top. But uh, Dwayne Smith purely because probably his lacking in fitness and lacking in form and lacking in uh, enough match time as far as uh, other formats is, uh, are also concerned. We'll let you go on because the Gujarat Lions were taking notes, I'm sure, Sanjay, <laughs> with problems that they've had. But yeah, Dwayne Smith, serious uh, questions to answer now as the do-or-die games come Gujarat's way. Let's move to match day match point number three. Let's talk about Delhi's batting for a bit because that last performance against an inform Hyderabad bowling lineup has given us uh, good points to talk about for Delhi. We're starting with Shreya Sayer. Uh, who's come in, of course, after a little illness in the start of the tournament, being used at number four, not where we've seen him in the past. Let's look at uh, numbers for Shreya Sahir before I throw up in the chat to Sanjay. Uh, Sanjay, opening average of uh, almost 31, striked at 132. He's done a job quietly at number four. Uh, at other positions, though, average is 16.4 and a strike rate of 109. He seems to be the kind of player that gets uh, bigger scores as he bats up the order. That's where he's played for Delhi in a successful campaign two seasons back. Not for them, but at least for him. Uh, and in first class cricket too. How do you see Shreya Sayer best used given all this, uh, all the options that Delhi has? He was phenomenal in 2015 season. After that, he dropped form and uh, because of that, uh, the, uh, Delhi Daredevils promoted somebody like a Mayank Agarwal in the, to in the top slot. Yeah. Uh, Mayank did really well for them, but because probably they wanted to bat Shreya at the top of the order, they sort of released Mayank. Uh, Shreya is getting indisposed, then Quinton de Kock uh, not available. So, it's sort of the chain of events uh, so conspired that he couldn't really take that spot which eventually went to somebody like a Sanju Samson and Sam Billings had to open. He also threw in Tare. So, as the stats that you showed, what was impressive, most impressive for me was that he is converting those 30s into 50s. He's got mm. 750s at the top of the order and anybody who does that at the top of the order, mm. make sure that not only is batting well at the top, but he's also carrying on and 50s and the 60s are actually very, very important for the lower order to free, free up and bat explosively. Okay, I'll take this to Teddy now. Normally, what you observe with an IPL team is young Indian batsman opens the batting. Delhi have six of those. Yeah. So, we've almost got to think of uh, who's looked the best to put up there. Samson's got some runs, Karun Nair's up and down. Looking at what you've seen with Delhi, can they find a, a stability on who should open for them and where does Shreya Sayar fit for you in that 45 seconds? Yeah, what you're saying with the, the younger Indian players, I mean, I think Karun Nair needed to find some form. Mm -hmm. um, and I think maybe opening the batting with the field up um, was a good chance for him to just free his arms and get some runs and it probably worked, he did. Um, I mean, I still got 30, 33 batting down at four, so yeah. it, it wasn't a disaster, it, was, it, it worked well, they won the game. Um, you could possibly put Pan down at, th at, at four, but then the left-hand-right-hand combination, I suppose they want him at three there. 
Um, but I mean, they won the game, mm. so it worked. And, and you know, Rahul Dravid loves developing the young Indian players and, oh, and, yeah. and loves testing them. So you know, he might be trying to test these guys in different positions and create a breeding ground for Indian cricket. <laughs> yep, sounds like Rahul Dravid. <laughs> Thank you, Shantet, Sanjay Bangar. Let's move to our next match day match point and we are talking about how big this, uh, these few games will be now for the Gujarat Lions. The race to the playoffs and it's not gone like last season where they surprised everyone by being the best team in the league phase of the tournament. Let's look at what their run-in is like. That's what you need to see now. How much are they playing at home? Well, they're playing nothing at home because Rajkot is done for the tournament. The two home games towards the end, Delhi and Hyderabad are at Kanpur and given it's the first time they'll, that any team will be playing there, toss up as to what conditions will be like. Delhi and Punjab, they've got a double header against Delhi and then they go away to Punjab. They also have so much to play for. So it's not the easiest uh, run-in of fixtures. At present, they stand uh, at six points from ten games. Let's get Sanjay Bangar's thoughts. That doesn't look like the easiest four games to play. Uh, how do Gujarat space it out when it comes to this last week or so? Your thoughts on whether they could make the playoffs? Very difficult for them to make to the playoffs because they have four games left. Even if they win, end up winning four games, there will be a lot of uh, things which will have to go their way and they would, even if that happens, they'll be tied up on 14 points with some other team and that would go to the net run rate. But what has impressed me in the last four, three or four games about Gujarat Lions is that they uh, actually raised their game, game quite a bit. Mm. Uh, the game that Rana won against KKR on his own was phenomenal. They've been involved in a in a super over yeah. with Mumbai Indians and they, uh, till the point Ben Stokes played that brilliant innings, mm. they, all, they were also in the game against RPS. So they're playing some good cricket of late and that should actually stand them in good stead because they want to end the season on a, on a pretty good note. Okay, let's take it to Teti. Uh, would you rather play a team that's in it and has everything to play for because the intensity or so of the game might lift you or a team that's not in it because they tend to, sometimes they can be more destructive, the ones that have nothing to play for. Gujarat have uh, three teams all that have something to play for. Does that make your campaign harder or easier as it goes on? It's a good, very good question. I think, you know, I think it, it, it doesn't matter either way. Yeah. I think um, it's going to be good for us to watch. That's, that's yeah. one thing for sure. But yeah, I mean, they, they've got, I mean, this next game is so important for them because they're going to play Delhi again in about six days' time. Mm. So they need to sort out what, 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 how their team's going to match up against Delhi because they've got them again. Um, but I think you know, they can't afford any more injuries. That's one thing for sure. <laughs> yeah. you know, their depth, I question their depth for the moment, their injuries. You know, they've had bad luck, so they really need to keep their players in the park. Um, they've, got, they've got big game players, you know, McCullum, mm. Finch, Rayner, um, Faulkner. So I think for them to win or have a chance in this competition, they need an individual performance each match um, that, that's going to get them over the line. Okay, simple as that. Just keep be careful of how you train Gujarat Lions. Good luck fielding 11-foot players for the rest of the tournament. Let's move to match day, match point number five. And we're going to make uh, Sean Tate and Sanjay Bangar pick their 11s. And uh, well, this is the Delhi-Gujarat game at the Kotla. Uh, one team coming off a win, one team not. So let's see if there are changes that are made. Sean Tate picks the Delhi team which has been one of the hardest tasks of the IPL for anybody this season. Ah, I like uh, that you've picked Pat Cummins ahead of Kagi Surabhad. I wonder what your thoughts are, Sean, whether that's because of his off game last time or what Cummins, uh, he's had a good season so far. No changes anywhere else, so Jayanti Adav keeps his place and we're assuming that Zahir Khan will continue to sit out a nursing an injury, so Karun Nair will captain and Mohamed Shami gets a game. Your thoughts on Cummins uh, the Rabada and also how that batting order would shape up. 45 seconds, Sean. Yeah, the, the Cummins over Rabada was, um, it's actually nothing to do with Rabada's last performance. I mean, you can have that, any bowler can have those those games and he's a great bowler. I just I just like Paddy Cummins. He's a he's an informed player, he's done well in this competition. He's rested the game, you know, he's, he's probably, probably hasn't trained much, he's been on ice. So he's going to be fit and raring to go and hopefully, you know, 150 km an hour Thunderbolts. Um, he adds something with the bat as well. He gives him a whack, he hit, hits him at the stadium. Um, he's just a good all-round player, I, I like him in there. Um, and the other, I mean, they won the last game, so I didn't want to tinker around too much with their 11 because a winning team should stay in the park more often than not. So, um, And they should have some confidence from that win. So keep, keep the same guys and, uh, and, and move on for another victory, hopefully, for them. Okay, simple as that for Delhi, but let's see the team they feel. They tend to surprise us when things are going right. Let's go to Gujarat Lions now. And what do they do after those few close games? Couple of losses to Mumbai and Pune. Big game for them. Who has Sanjay Bangar gone with? I think the 11 fittest players they could find. Uh, Dwayne Smith features in it. So does James Faulkner. And he's stuck with Pradeep Sangwan as the extra seamer uh, with Ankit Soni as the leggy. At Delhi, where there was a bit of dew in the last game. Concerns in that team, if any, for you, Sanjay? And a reason for picking or persisting with Pradeep Sangwan. Off you go. 
Pradeep Sangwan was pretty impressive uh, in the last game. He picked up two wickets. He got Ajinkya Rahane. He's also got uh, uh, the dangerous Steve Smith out to a very, very good short ball. So I think uh, somehow they have two left-arm uh, fast bowlers uh, who can create angle on the crease. Somebody uh, like a Faulkner who has enough experience to bowl in the death overs and somebody like a Sony who is pretty impressive in the games that he's played. So more or less uh, they do not have the pace but they have the variety in their attack and the batting uh, I mean picks themselves because they have uh, some really really good uh, batsmen in the top six. So I mean as I said earlier they're playing some good cricket in the last three games that they played and hence I've persisted with that same level. Excellent. That's got plenty of time to spare so I'll let you guys off early. Thank you Sanjay <laughs> Bangar, Sean Tate. Pleasure for your thoughts. You could get their predictions and more uh, chat up uh, in the build up to this game on our live show 7.30 p.m. It's a big game uh, for both teams. They've got to keep winning to keep their chances alive and that's on uh, the site as well as on our Facebook page. If you're on Facebook join us mid innings for the 8 p.m. kickoff to make sure you get your comments and questions put through to our panel and subscribe to our content on YouTube if that's where you're watching us. It's a big one for Delhi and Gujarat. We hope to have your company for the chit chat around the same.